school colliery bituminous mine that's right bituminous and here's some flooded rail this is gonna be a good one so up here right there to the right it goes straight ahead it goes to the right somewhat and then goes straight and then also goes to the left this is gonna be fun Look at this rail, how intact it is. Those three piece timber sets are absolutely gorgeous. This is just so photogenic. Remarkable. You can notice the three piece timber set here and a skinny rail. This is very skinny, maybe three quarters as wide, gauge-wise, as an anthracite rail track bed. But this is one of the largest parts of the mine, height-wise, where you can stand. Most of the mine, you can make haulage gangways like this. This was collar, this was not boot. This was never electrified. This was all done via muscle power and animal power. I am walking in history right now. This is great. This was built by Civil War veterans. American muscle, baby. Love it. Okay, this is the leftmost portion right off the main. Drift number two, I believe this is, according to maps. We're going to go down this later. All right, this is the main portion. I believe, again, drift gangway number two. This should go about three quarters of a mile back. It has some really cool curves and everything in it. Oh, I'm gonna love this. This is in the roof of the gangway. This is from a hand-powered coal auger. This is for drilling into the rock and they would set their blasting powder until this hole that they would create. So it's from the formation of the gangway itself. And again, this was hand power, not mechanization. So we're in the main gangway, gangway number two. And this was all advanced into the mountain by hand power, where they were cranking with little hand augers and would blast it with black powder. This was before dynamite. There's carbide tints here because there was bootleggers that came here during the Great Depression all the way up until World War II because they left a lot of coal down here. And the bootleggers, these again are the carbide tin, tins, they were going after the coal pillars. Luckily, they left most of the coal pillars in here and that's why we were able to walk down here. So they would mine coal, leave coal, mine coal, leave coal. And when they would leave that coal, that would hold the roof up. Timbers don't hold the roof up. They're not holding up a whole huge mountain overhead from some little timbers. But this is remarkable because it's such a tiny little mine. And we got a cool surprise up ahead. I think you're going to really like this. Such a pristine gangway. To find rail intact in a mine this old is just unbelievably rare. One of the workings right off of the main gangway. Look how small that is. There's the roof. And there's my flame safety lamp for scale. <laughs> what? The track actually curves straight ahead. It goes into like an S shape. Oh, I can't believe what I'm seeing here. 1869, 1870 roughly. Pickaxe marks right in the main gangway itself. This is real. This is, I guess, sandstone? But yeah, it looks like it was just done yesterday. Some guy was down here taking stabs at the wall. Look at that! 
Oh, my God, it has not weathered at all. Whoa. This guy's probably been dead maybe 120, easily 100 years, and it looks like he was just down here with a pickaxe. I just can't get over this. Unbelievable. Could you imagine how bad it would have been down here back then with just a teapot oil wick lamp on top of your head? Wow. Small flooded working right off the main gangway. Sort of the bottom part of that rock, where it looks like a pipe. And the top portion there, again, looks like a pipe going up a slight incline. Those were the hand drill marks. And supplemented to those are the pickaxe marks. So the guy that was creating this gangway, he was drilling those holes, filling them with black powder, blasting down, and then getting the little bit of rock that was remaining with the pickaxe marks. For Pennsylvania to have this type of preservation and it's not weathered is nearly unheard of, especially given the age of it being right around the American Civil War time era. So yeah, look at these pickaxe marks. I mean, you could see where it's like kind of like a clay and it's just, it looks like it was just done a moment ago. What? I'm speechless. Boom, boom, boom. More like this angle. Fire a shot down from that. And at this angle, like this. Whew. Closest thing to a time machine right here. My friend is there for scale purposes in this shot. He's going around the S turn. And he's gone. <laughs> what a gorgeous shot that is. After reflecting on nearly two decades of abandoned coal mine exploration, I have to say that this small gangway with its scaled down track and just gorgeous aesthetic has to be my favorite. What a breathtaking scene this is. This is really awesome. Look at this intact rail. My friend is at the end of the rail up there, shining his light towards me. This is the way looking towards the exit. Something else it really is. This rail is from the 1860s, 1870s. Look at this beautiful gob wall. And we're to the right of the rail in the main portion of the Second gangway here. 
So this was an old abandoned working. They were done working the coal in this particular section and they didn't want the good air going into there because they didn't have men working in that particular spot. So they would short up with rocks and put dirt in between the cracks of the rocks. And that way it was just much easier for them to ventilate the mine overall. And it was safer for those working down here. It's just a sea of pickaxe marks. Again, there's another hand drill mark going up at a slight angle. You can see all of his pickaxe marks after it was done firing that shot down. He was making it perfect. He did a good job. He really did. It's in gorgeous condition. 150 plus years later. And this gob wall, just like those pickaxe marks, is in remarkable condition. Just a few rocks have fallen out. There's other parts of this mine that have gob walls that are just completely intact, 100%. Great craftsmanship down here. All right, my friend is now facing the opposite way, going deeper into the mine. You can see how that rail really does make like an S type turn. So we're gonna go deeper into this mine. Can you imagine the amount of mules that would have walked down these tracks every day hauling coal? I don't even know how they fit mules down here. It's so small, it's so low. So we're right off of the gangway and these little pickaxe marks. He was going vertical. I don't know what he was doing. Just a perfectionist at work. We're actually parallel to gangway number two. This is gangway number one. And this is even shorter than gangway number two on the map, or drift two, that is. We call it gangway number two, but it's really drift number two. And this was main haulage. This is interesting, though. This is number 36. This was a working number. So this is 36 workings into the mine, most likely. So they would mine coal, leave coal, mine coal, leave coal. And this was number 36 of where they were mining the coal, distance-wise, from the entrance. So yeah, a lot of this mine has collapsed right off of the main gangways. They were pulling the coal supports out. And look at this horrendous collapse. My flame safety lamp is used for scale purposes here. And now we're looking deeper into the mine up gangway number one drift number one Whew. madness and center portion of this frame here you'll see a carbide can from the bootleggers 1920s 1930s i don't know what do you think you think this collapse is passable yeah i can get through that <laughs> no you're not going through that it's it's literally impossible 100% plugged. Very low vein workings. That timber took some weight. There's some gobbing back there. All right, man, you can come up here. I'm filming you making your approach. Thanks for getting that. How's this for low vein? Wow. That's low. I was a little bit hesitant with the air back here too. That's why I have my flame lamp. It's always near me. Sometimes if you crawl on working even 10 foot, there could be black damp in that 10 feet difference where you lift your lamp back. So. Yeah. They might just have a little look back here. It's actually stable. 
We kept up most of the pillars back here. Wow, this is low. Woo! Woo, woo, woo! <laughs> yeah, I'd say this is pretty low. Just crawl through that low section. It opens up a little bit. But the rock strata here is very interesting. We yeah, gobbing. Neat little gob wall built. Some weird mold growth. That is the smallest gob wall I've ever seen my flame safety lamp used for scale so small so after doing that crawl it's like opens up to a little tunnel passage hmm see where it goes cold delamination could be from pressure but this is the coal vein and it's like getting pushed out here all right doesn't look that promising but it does Make a left turn around that corner. Okay, so we were paralleling the first gangway and dead ahead is a gob wall. We're on the other side of a gob wall and I can guarantee that that is gangway number one with the rail. This is really cool. So they were done work in this section and they built that gob wall. Again, to better regulate airflow throughout the mine. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Figuring it out down here. My friend found a bottle that's intact with the cork still in it. 1800s vintage. And to the left is a top to a carbide bottom. So instead of having to constantly put new carbide fuel into their carbide lamp, they would carry a bunch of these bottoms around with them. And these bottoms would screw off. So they'd have like three or four or whatever and they needed a lid for those loose bottoms. And that's exactly what this is. So that's from the Depression era. And this is from the Civil War era, this bottle. Two cool artifacts. Other side of that gob wall. That's not that pretty. <laughs> oh, it's a big section of rock that came down. Okay, so this is gangway number one off of drift number one and we're gonna fall this way back and get back to gangway number two before i go up that gangway number one to gangway number two i gotta look in some of these side workings and this is completely collapsed out Ooh, and i'm on my knees this is how low it is in here look at that little tunnel maybe three and a half feet high it's so photogenic down here. Wow. Cool gobbing. Again, I'm on my knees. My head is basically touching the roof while I'm on my knees. So I'm just talking to my friend here. Yeah, the mind just faces out here, man. Is it like a, a gob wall that you dug in? It just comes to the end of where they were working and then it like goes to collapse but yeah they were working right here and just didn't advance any further i would say this was the bootleggers you know yeah what do you think of this mine it's awesome it's something else isn't it it's in pretty great shape too it is and don't forget you know this was worked via the original miners and then they had the depression era people coming up here bootlegging it yeah. and even after they bootlegged it a lot of it's in good condition it's huge it goes for several miles many miles actually i would say three or four miles of tunnels and workings easily it's gargantuan sardine tins no matter if it's anthracite or bituminous you see these in all the old school mines neat timber Here's the gobbing wall where my friend found the bottle. Look at that drill mark. You can see like the scratches. Again, looks like it was just made yesterday. Neat. That bituminous is shiny. Almost looks like anthracite. 
It really does, but it's not. Soft coal. So we're crawling these low pitch vein workings back to the main gangway. You said you heard a voice maybe, huh? Yeah, some kind of echo back there. Yeah, I was hearing some weird stuff the too. The lines do get creepy. Yeah, I was hearing something before. Even when I was filming and playing back some stuff, mm. I was hearing something talking to the camera. <laughs> All right, we got back to gangway number one. A little bit of crawling. Look at how small this is, height-wise. I can't believe they had meals in here. And here's working number 37. You can see how they smeared it with their finger, it looks like. I really haven't seen many survey points in this mine, and there's one. So you said you're hearing voices, huh? Yeah, it sounds kind of like the air is whispering through. It's just pretty creepy. That's not good. That happens. Yeah, other side of that gob wall. From gangway one to gangway two. Neat. This is most intriguing. Look at that. Working number 37. Awesome. A wooden barrel that's collapsed in on itself from decaying, unfortunately. Back in the main gangway. And look at this gob wall. It's the one that we just saw the other side of. Pretty interesting when you think about it. We're on the other side of this wall. <laughs> I love that. Looking directly over the rail, up at the roof. And there's one of those old school hand drilled drill marks. I don't know. You said it looks like an olive oil bottle? It does, but what are miners doing with olive oil? I don't know. Is it like rancid milk? I, I can't tell. It's been corked for a while. I mean, probably not sealed now. Is it Tommy Knocker? Um, elixir? <laughs> it's what they drink to stay alive. You're taking the Tommy Knocker elixir. He'll have no power. That's nasty though, man. It's gross. It's definitely not oil. I was thinking it was oil. Nope. Weird. No idea. We'll find out. What kind of bugs are these? We're probably half a mile into this mine. Like I said, that portal is collapsed. So nothing can really get in here easily. Are these... Termites? No, termites can't be exposed to air, I don't believe. It's something that's completely blind. It'd have to be, right? We're around many corners and turns and everything, and we're in the rail bed, so it must be eating the ties. Okay, that's why the ties vanish. These things eat them. Maybe the person who drove this gangway Got a rock and carved LD. Wow. Main gangway portion. Another survey marker. And here's a gob wall. And they punched through it, probably the bootleggers. And these tunnels go way, way back. I've been back there before. Whew. So this is probably from the colliery era, right after the Civil War. I don't know, is that poplar or birch? That's still holding up that slab of rock. Carbide tins, and look at that wooden barrel. Interesting. That barrel is intact. Yeah, that's not good. Indicator. That's a sizable collapse. All of the workings right off of this other gangway, I don't know the number of the maps on me currently, but the first working off of this gangway everywhere is collapsed like this. So this is another gangway. And again, I'm on my knees and I could almost touch my head to the roof. 
they really did not care about the comfort of their workers and their mules. What an old school wooden air door. Up there you can see one of the hinges still mounted till a board that fell over. Looks like an L backwards. Yep, that's a bad collapse. But that door is awesome. There are those old school hinges for the air door. I know what that is. Black powder tin. They would fill their black powder in that. <laughs> wow. Amazing. So we're just off of one of many, many workings off of a whole different gangway network. Here's another air door. And it's overwhelming. It's just huge. So you can see the sulfur in the coal, those two horizontal seams of imperfections. But I found a whole nother gangway network. And it's just, this mine is just overwhelmingly large. So my head is resting on the roof. I'm on my knees. Here's a nice slab of bituminous coal that has fallen over. That's what they were going after down here. A little bit of split in that coal. Fane's taking some weight. Such a beautiful gob wall. That looks like they were gobbing off a tunnel or another gangway. The bootleggers took the mine rail with them, either for scrap or to relocate throughout the mine. But you can see this old rail bed still. You can see where the mine car wheels were cutting into the muck back in the day, like the clay. There's the rail tie. Neat. This is the aftermath of robbing coal pillars. On the other side of a gob wall. That's not all the way up to the roof. You can see an old air door. And there's the support for the air door itself. So cool. Yeah, that's a white cross painted on a coal pillar. And I was told that the old timers would paint these crosses where one of their comrades was killed at. Yeah, you can really see that cross. That white paint is dripping down. Just doing a quick audio dub over this clip while editing. And I really have to wonder what the truth is behind these crosses down here because I saw three of them overall down here, and you really have to wonder what was going on. Were people really killed here? I have seen these in an anthracite coal mine before, and it was right behind an air door, and that is where a lot of people got killed, so you have to wonder. And now we have arrived at the end of gangway number two. You can see that coal. It's got some imperfections in it, for sure. But... It just goes to acid mine drainage and then it just faces out. So right at the end of the gangway, it continues up. Small little side working. My friend's going to push up there. All right, man, have fun. So there's that cross right in the bituminous coal vein. It's self-painted right on it. So someone met their demise right there. Very sad. Maybe kicked by a mule or crushed by a car. So we're walking back towards the exit in gangway number two. That's the end of the gangway itself. And this is just another massive side tunnel or gangway going into the mountain. And it's huge back there. Very, very large. There's some better lighting looking up that way. Ooh, I remember that goes probably a third of a mile or longer. Some old carbide graffiti. RJW something. Neat. 
Ryder, I think R Y D E R or Ryden. Oh, what is that? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> like, is that oil for real? I don't even know. What's the smell like? I don't know. <laughs> Does it have a smell? Kind of. I, I can't. You just got to smell it yourself. <laughs> Nasty. Look at this bituminous coal. I believe that's a slab of coal. It's got the sulfur imperfections in it. It's gorgeous, though. Just endless gangways down here. Remarkable. My favorite mine. No joke. Cross number two. And in this new gangway. That's low. Wow, that resembles an anthracite mine. Looking down another huge haulage gangway. Oh, it's overwhelming how big this one is. Overwhelming. A big, big wooden barrel. Very large one. That little star someone etched into the roof. That's from the miners. There's a third cross back there. And it's a really bad cave in. I wonder if someone's still under this cave in. Ooh, I just realized that. That's terrifying. Ooh. This is the worst entrance ever or exit, depending on how you look at it. A little spider right there. Through this crack is the way out. But look at that overhead. It's like a pyramid upside down. Oh my God, it's the scariest thing ever. All right, so right where this arrow is, there was an etching into the roof where someone got a rock and in cursive, they wrote Herbert. That's what it looks like anyway. Well, I hope you enjoyed this mine. Unfortunately, it has sealed itself shut from the vicious winter, spring freeze thaw action cycles and is no longer accessible. As sad as that is from a historian point of view, it might be for the better because look at how sketchy that entrance was. Whoa! So yeah, nature reclaims another one. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. See ya!